Chapter 8, Lessons 1 and 2, Confidence Intervals, uh, basic idea of them, and then confidence intervals for sample proportions. A key thing for these is that um, in Chapter 7, we talked about sampling distributions when we knew the parameter and based our work off of that parameter so you guys could get an idea of what the rules are and how it works and the patterns that as the sample size n increases. Uh, when we're really trying to figure things out, we rarely know the true parameter. We're usually trying to use our sample statistic in order to determine the parameter. So um, here we're looking at the sample statistic and generating one that gives us an accurate picture of the actual parameter since that's what we usually do. If we already knew the parameter there wouldn't be a whole lot of point in taking a sample statistic. So we looked at that stuff in the previous chapter as a way of understanding the rules and how a sampling distribution relates to the population distribution. So in 8 one we just look at what is a confidence interval uh, and the requirements that must be met. They're the same as before. Random, normal, and independent. So that'll be good. We're just building off that. It's something that everybody should already know at this point. So our sample statistic we generate uh, for a confidence interval, we call it our point estimate or our point estimate. Uh, it would be the middle of what our confidence interval would be. We came up with that as long as we had um, all of our conditions met, um, especially the random conditions, and we avoided all types of bias and had solid sampling methods, then we should have a solid point estimate, which would represent the middle of our confidence interval. Uh, the standard deviation we're going to use in order to determine the margin of error, meaning how confident we are in a range of values above and below the sample statistic or point estimate as it's called in a confidence interval. So in general we'll have a point estimate plus or minus our margin of error. Um, so the point estimate is our sample statistic for a proportion which we're going over now. It'll be the proportion you get from your sample. And then uh, we'll use this, the, we'll have a standard error that's determined by the standard deviation of the statistic, standard de deviation, standard error. And then the margin of error is determined about how confident, meaning how, what percent of the normal curve is covered to the left and right of our point estimate. Uh, so in general, we'll have our sample statistic plus or minus our margin of error, which you oftentimes see when people report, um, for example, support for a candidate, like 60% of the country support him, plus or minus 3%. That would make um, our margin of error 3%, 60% our sample statistic, and then our confidence interval would be 60 minus 3, or 57%, to 60 plus 3, to 63%. So that'd be 57% to 63% would be our confidence interval. And that would be generated, the margin of error would depend on uh, how confident, meaning what percent of the normal curve is covered. We'll usually go with 95%, though sometimes we'll use 99, especially in medicine and science, and sometimes we'll use 90% if we're not as worried about being as confident. So to say that we're 95% confident is shorthand for 95% of all possible samples of a given size n from this population will result in an interval that captures the unknown parameter. So we're saying that 95% of all the samples are going to fall within the interval we generate. The confidence interval will be a range, the range of values that um, our sample statistic will fall within 95% of the time. So for, in order to interpret it, and I want you to use this, very strictly use this fill in the blanks to make sure you do it right, is we are C percent, so if it's 95, you'd insert 95 here, we are 95% confident that the interval from blank to blank which you'll calculate, captures the actual or true value of the whatever the parameter from the problem is. So use that as a sentence to explain your answers for this chapter when you're explaining your final answer of your confidence interval after, after it's calculated. So here are some examples. Uh, you can pause here for these examples to read them over. Um, keep in mind that the difference here in using a z-score is that um, our, our confidence interval is centered around the middle of the normal curve. So if we're 95% confident, we're looking at 0.95. However, the percentile we're not going to use isn't 0.95 because we're centered around the middle of the curve. The z-score includes the left side of the whole, everything to the left of it. So that includes the 0.95 plus the little piece of the tail that's not included in the 95% confidence interval. So you'd use inverse norm 0.975 for the z-score for a 95% confidence interval. We'll go over this in class, but try drawing a normal curve right now, uh, cutting out, leaving two equal size areas in either tail, and then the z-score for the far right would include the, far, the area to the far left.
So again, you're going to find your sample statistic, and it's going to be plus or minus a critical value. That would be the z-score. We call that the critical value for a confidence interval because the margin of error can change depending on how confident we want to be. Um, and then times the standard deviation of the statistic. So all of this is stuff that we've gone over. We're just kind of putting together all the pieces now. So our statistic is the point estimate. And then this whole thing on the right to the right of the plus or minus is the margin er of error. The standard deviation of the statistic we call the standard error. So um, we started talking about confidence intervals knowing we know the standard deviation. We usually don't know the parameter of the standard deviation. We'll be going on to looking at for proportions and then population means when we do this, uh, how confidence intervals work for both of them. Our three conditions, random, normal, and independent. Remember, random is center. We need data that should be from a well-designed, unbiased experiment using an SRS um, and random assignment if it's an experiment. Uh, remember, SRS lets us apply our results to the population from which it came, and random assignment lets us determine cause and effect. The normal condition needs to be met. Remember what that is for proportions and how it's different for uh, means. And uh, in order to know that the approximate shape of our sampling distribution is um, approximately normal. And then the independent or 10% condition needs to be met in order to use the standard deviation for the standard error. So our guiding question involves the three conditions for esti estimating a parameter using a confidence interval and how satisfying them allows us to form a confidence interval. Now these are the same as we went over before for sampling distributions. So you should know them well. Shape is the normal condition. Center is the random condition. Spread is the independent condition. That's going to be your free response here, so pay close attention to this. Now the spread here for sample proportions would be given by that formula, which we're all familiar with. If we don't know what the true parameter is, and we're trying to figure this out, uh, the largest value we could get from here would be by inserting 0.5 for p and seeing what happens uh, as far as getting our standard deviation. So standard error is the standard deviation of a statistic. This is our standard error. Depending on the confidence interval, you'd multiply it by the z-score appropriate. So we looked at 1.96 for 95% confidence. Um, remember, if uh, the normal condition is met, we can use this, these values in order to determine how confident we are. So 95% is about two standard deviations. Now we're going to be more exact. It's actually 1.96 standard deviations above the value and 1.96 standard deviations below. So 1.96 is our value. Now notice this is what I was talking about before. Here's our point estimate would be right here in the middle of our curve. 95% would include from here to here. So our z-score actually depends on the percentile including that piece of the tail that's not in it. Because remember, the percentile is everything to the left. So for you can either memorize what the z-scores scores are for 90% confidence, 95, 99% confidence. You should also understand where they come from. That the percentile is given by looking at the percent of area, so 0.95. But then the percentile includes this for a z-score. So it would be 0.95 plus this. If we know 95% is here, we know 5% is outside. It's symmetric, so half of that's here, half's here. So this will be 0.025, 2.5% plus 95%. So 97.5. If you do inverse norm, 0.975, you'll get this value of 1.96. So that's the idea there. For a one sample Z interval for a popular proportion, that means we have one sample. We're using a Z interval, your Z score, for a proportion, a number between 0 and 1 or 0% to 100% uh, using the formula that we looked at above. So we're going to have our point estimate, or p hat, our sample statistic, plus or minus the z-score, which depends on our confidence level, times the standard deviation, or the standard error, once, is what we call it once we, uh, once we are making a confidence interval. Um, so that's key to know. That's how we're making our interval. Then we solve for that. We solve by adding, and then we solve by subtracting to get our interval or our confidence interval. And we do state, plan, do, conclude. What parameter do you want to estimate, and what confidence level? Um, what inference method are you going to use? Uh, meaning, are you going to, what calculations you need to use in order to determine it, check the conditions, random, normal, independent. Why, think about why those are important, because in the do, state, do step, we need to have uh, use normal CDF or normal PDF in order to calculate this. Um, sorry about that. That was normal CDF and normal PDF for determining the percent of values in there. But what we're going to be using it for is so that we can use a z-score, which depends on it being a normal curve. Uh, and then conclude means interpret your interval in the context of the problem. So explain what your confidence interval means. And that's what the sentence starter I gave you above for C percent confidence level. So again, here's our formula for margin of error. 
uh, go back on any of this you need, and here's your multiple choice question. What is the critical value of Z star? Remember, we write Z star for critical value in a confidence interval for a 95% confidence interval and why. Uh, so please pause the video here, look over the outline for 8.1, 8.2. The vocab and my outline version of it is both in Schoology, and then answer the multiple choice in the free response below.